That's what we were all doing. <laughs> <laughs> Afternoon to those of you joining us on the call. Um, as ever, we'll kick off in the room, and if we do have time, we'll, we'll come across to Zoom. But um, as mentioned, we'll begin here uh, at the training ground with Gail from Sky Sports News. Gail. Good afternoon, Jonas. Um, can you just uh, give us a little bit of an update on some of your players on the way back and some concerns? I think Laura left on crutches, didn't she? Um, last weekend, and where Leah is, and also Steph Catley, where we might see her this weekend. Yeah, so yeah, Laura unfortunately couldn't start the game against Leicester. Uh, there was an incident in, in the warm up. Uh, it's, it's not a major injury, uh, it's a minor injury, but it does make her unavailable here for the, for the weekend. Um, then we, we have players returning and progressing really well, and I think both Leah Williamson and Steph Catley has the possibility to make the squad here in the in the weekend game, so that's obviously positive news for us. When you um, looked back at that Leicester game, how did you feel about the performance? It's a little bit, I guess, of a hard watch for you, but on the other side of that, you think back to last season and maybe those games against West Ham and Tottenham, mm -hmm. you did at least this time come away with it. Uh, yeah, I, I think there is a lot of positives in, in that game. There are things that we should be doing better as well. Uh, we're playing that game under, of course, tough circumstances, playing a huge game for us in the Champions League on the Thursday night, which obviously took both a lot of physical and mental focus and then have to refocus and recharge from an away game um, on Sunday against a tough Leicester team that's had a whole week of preparation and, and setting up tricky situations for us. Um, so I, I'm under no illusion that this is a very competitive WSL season and we, we will need to be at our best and we will need to find ways to win. And we were doing exactly that on, uh, on Sunday. And uh, those are the positives that I'm going to focus on. And knowing that there will be games that things will flow a little bit easier for us as well. But that's the thing during the season. If you want to be successful, if you want to be consistent, you need to find ways to win under all those circumstances. Talking of um, fixtures and cancellations and having to have very limited prep time, what have you made of the whole situation of Chelsea having their game cancelled? They then play Tuesday, you've got a huge game against them on the weekends. You'll have maybe what, one training session when you get back from Bayern. Um, in, in a time when we're trying to make the best possible spectacle of football, is this working? What would you like to see looked at in the future when this happening? You're right. It's not a good situation. And um, I mean, I have a quiz for you guys. There are 16 teams involved in the Champions League group stage. How many of the teams are playing on Sunday, the 6th of October? Is there anyone of you who knows how many of the 16 teams that are playing on the Sunday? I just know Bayern are. No. Well, we are. So that's one. That's, no, that's sort of a lead. <clears throat> And if it only would be us, it would be an Arsenal problem, but it's also Manchester City playing. So it tells you that the only two teams that are playing are English teams. The only other team that was scheduled to play on the Sunday was Chelsea. So out of the 16 teams, 13 teams were scheduled to play on the Friday or Saturday, and the three English teams were all scheduled to play on the Sunday. With each team of those having a 50% chance or risk, depending on how you see it, to play their game on the Tuesday. That has been the information that has been there for months. That we have a league organization that doesn't act proactively on these matters. It's damaging for the fans. And I mean, getting postponed games as supporters. And this time it doesn't... Um, concern Arsenal fans but it does concern fans to other clubs in the league and I think the fans are the backbone to what we're trying to build um, and, and one of the biggest reasons to what we're doing why we are and I think that is simply unacceptable to sort of having 
people's money and time being treated in that way um, beforehand and it's simply not good enough from the league then you come to the second part and saying do the league want the English club teams to be successful at European level uh, and I would hope the answer to that would be yes but the actions shows differently uh, it shows that this is not one of their priorities to have the club teams to be successful. And I think that, that, that is very negative for English women's club football because it's very important that this is the first time in the group stage that three teams reach the group stage. And that should be something that we celebrate instead of it becomes a problem. And I know this time it's us, it's Chelsea, it's City, but actually it's very important for the whole league that we are successful in Europe because we can improve the coefficient. Uh, it's going to mean for seasons to come that it also gets better for other English teams that qualify for the European um, tournaments. And then my third thing with this is that now obviously it's even worse for us because of this amateurish behavior with not having a proactive plan and taking away a game like Chelsea's and postpone that it now puts us into a situation where we play Sunday then we play Wednesday away against Bayern Munich who doesn't play Sunday because they of course play Saturday because they have a league organization that sees the value of getting their club teams a better position and then we return playing Saturday against Emirates uh, or against Chelsea at Emirates, and we um, we have considerably less uh, preparation time than, than the opponents. So we we'll be having this handling the sporting disadvantage in in two huge games for us. Now you know me, and even better, you know my my players and team. We're not the team that's going to lie down and and give up just because situations are are tough. Uh, we're going to dig deeper than we have ever done before, and we're going to try and fuel our performances from that but what needs to change uh, i i think the approach to the champions league football and the proactiveness and with the respect to the supporters it has to change and it's not good enough to blame it on uefa because everyone across europe has had the same information for so long time and the only one that hasn't acted on that information is the wsl That's clear. Um, can I just ask you as well about your goalkeeping situation? Um, obviously, Daphne came on for her debut, finished as player of the match. Um, clearly, fantastic performance from her. Um, talk to us about the dynamics between your two goalkeepers and what their strengths are and how you're going to go about using them this season. Do you have a number one or is it sort of similar to what happens with and It's not a new situation for, for me having competition on the goalkeeping position. Uh, I think we have had that in uh, all seasons that I've, I've been here. Now how it works with goalkeepers is that sometimes it's a very strong fit against a specific opponent. Sometimes it's about getting the rhythm and building their relationships with one goalkeeper and a uh, and the defending line and those are all things to take into the considerations but right now the season is young uh, we have a lot of football ahead of us and uh, I'm just really happy that I have um, lots of good choices on the goalkeeping position Thank you. Thanks yeah. Ian from TalkSport Hi Joris, how are you? I'm fine um, If I can just take you back to the European situation um, is part of the problem with Arsenal the fact that you're now playing all your games at the Emirates? I mean, you couldn't play tonight because the men's team played tomorrow. You can't play tomorrow because the men's team played tomorrow. So you've got to play someday. Well, I think the problem is the proactiveness um, about where, where you, what you do and have a plan for if different scenarios come about. As I said before, there was a 50% risk or chance to be playing on Tuesday, which would rule out the possibility to play your game on Sunday. Now, if you have that in your planning scenario, of course now you need to have a plan B. What happens if you play on Tuesday? And if you don't have a clear answer to that, you have a problem. 
that's the league's problem. What would your clear answer? Because you, 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 you moved away from Bore and Wood because you've outgrown that, which I get, and, and I think you ought to be congratulated for playing all your games in the main stadium. But at some stage, that might become a problem. But, but I mean, you have plenty of different solutions that you could that you could do. You can have alternative playing dates. Uh, you could have. Um, yeah, that would probably be my number one suggestion to have alternative playing dates and just making sure that if this game comes here, then we would move it here. But it doesn't, it, I mean, even in men's football, the, the FA don't help out Man City or Liverpool or Arsenal or you know, whoever else is in the Champions League, that's the better this year. You know, we, we've never had that in this country whereby the governing body for men's or women's football has ever really considered, have they? Teams playing in Europe. Because I, well, I might be wrong in form, but I think the case is that if you get drawn one certain day in, in Champions League and that gets too close to your game in the league, you automatically move your game. Yeah, but there's no being called off, that's what I'm saying. This is the first time for, I, for either men's or women's football we've seen it being called off. We've seen abroad teams being given a free weekend to prepare for European football, but not in this country. You're asking for the same in this country, correct? I'm asking for an approach of having solutions when a situation arises instead of sticking your hand in the sand and think the problem is going to disappear from, from that. And if you ask me for what approach I like, I like to have the solution orientated. Uh, the problem doesn't disappear because you ignore it. And the problem in this case was that it was ignored despite it was a significant risk of this situation happening which it did. And I think there would have been solutions. To your point, there's probably going to be a lot of creative thinking sometimes to find those solutions. Um, but I'm sure the club and the league would have worked that out if you're giving enough time and, and finding those solutions. Just one more on problems and solutions then. You suffered it a lot last year, quite a lot of clubs did, ACL injuries to players. Everton have already had two players in successive weeks ruled out with ACL injuries. Um, why is the women's game no nearer solving the problem of why the players are getting injured? I mean, there is a lot of research um, going into to this. I think what is important when, when you see and, and the research that I've been shown is that it's not an increase in the amount of injuries that's happening during training or match minutes compared to how it was looking a decade ago. But we are playing more football now, and that means that you have more injuries. Uh, and how can you prevent those injuries? I think it's a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, there is all details matters when it go into this. And I think we're obviously trying to build as a holistic program as possible uh, at Arsenal. Scheduling is definitely one of those things that is really, really important to get the correct time between the games. Uh, so I also think that the governing bodies has a really important part in helping the clubs in, uh, in making this as good as possible. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Tim. Uh, Jonas, a uh, question is about two players, if you don't mind, uh, a bit of a Scandinavian theme since we're playing Everton. Um, Freedom Mornham uh, is up for Player of the Month and obviously on good goal scoring form. I wonder how much work has been done on goal scoring positions for her, because when she hit a good streak a couple of seasons ago, a lot of them were long shots. But I'm looking at the goals she's scoring at the moment, and I'd say it be more sustainable, those kind of uh, secondary runs, is that something you've worked on with her? Yeah, I mean, Frida, we, we worked a lot with her and more importantly, she has worked a lot on the training pitch. Uh, she's really ambitious. Uh, she really wants to, to improve herself and to find the next level. And uh, you are right, she has a really good long sh distance shot as well. Uh, we haven't seen so much of that so far uh, this season, but her consistently getting into these golden zone opportunities. Um, I think she really has improved in that and I think she's gotten the reward for that as well. And just a question on Catherine Cole, who again hasn't played many minutes this season. I know the schedule is going to get busier and there might be opportunities, but 
I wondered whether um, what kind of conversations you had with her, whether alone again was explored in the summer, and whether you have a developed sense of her position perhaps in that midfield, whether it's in the double pivot or in the 10. I think that you're right. Key has not been playing so many competitive minutes for us so far this season. Um, neither did Daphne van Domseler before her game against Leicester. And it is the situation that we have in the in the squad when we have a lot of competition uh, that sometimes really, really good football players doesn't get to play that much. I have to say, though, when I see Key in, in training, that she she is developing a lot. I think she's a great football player. Um, my primary position I see her in would probably be like an eight position because uh, she is a hybrid between a six and ten. Uh, I think she's comfortable on, on the ball. Uh, she covers great distance. She can go box to box. Uh, really, really good in, in covering pressing distance. Um, I see a lot of potential in Key. Uh, I think she's one of these culture bearers for us at the moment with saying that you don't play as much, but do you still apply yourself 100% in training every day? That makes the group better. Uh, and she's 100% one of those players. And uh, there is never any guarantees for playing time for any player. But if you keep applying yourself the best way possible, I'm confident that when you get opportunities, you're going to be in your best position possible to take them. Thanks. Kit. Hi, Jonas. Um, we've seen last season's top three in the WSL all have a narrow victory against a team outside the top three this season, so Chelsea on the first weekend and then you and City last weekend. Do you feel, have you noticed the league getting stronger this season or do you feel that's kind of always been the case and it's been, it's as strong as it was last year? No, I, I mean, it's just as easy as seeing the transfer windows uh, every season. I, I think it's it's apparent that it's it's every team is strengthening uh, year to year. You you see Leicester, the team we played here on Sunday. You compare their squad to two seasons ago or three seasons ago. It's a massive difference in in how they've been building their their squad. And almost every team in the league is is the same. It's it's such an evolving league and that's why it's so challenging and why it's so um, exciting to, to be a part of, of the league. But I also think it's why we should put a lot of demands on the governing body in making sure that we do take care of, of the league and with interest and with the fans and with the players coming here to play so we give them the best possible chance of being successful. Do you feel you voice the demands that you've kind of talked about in the last 20 minutes and you voice those with the WSL and the government bodies in England? I think I've been one of the uncomfortable voices for all my days that I've been in, not only involved in, um, in British football, but also in, um, in Swedish football. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with being the uncomfortable one and, and saying when things need to be be better and and i think we have a duty to the game to do that and uh it's it's really important that we improve the conditions for team competing in europe and that's not only a this season thing that has been a consistent theme uh for all my seasons here thanks thanks kate helen at the front yeah Giannis, um it's just so interesting because we meant to have these people who are in charge now of the wsl and championship new broom and all that sort of stuff, but they seem to have actually made it worse with all this stuff. They don't seem to have you like planned for the future at all. And I can see that it's going to happen not just in these rounds, but it could happen further along the road at all. Do you actually ever get to talk to them direct about how these things are planned out? I think it's one of the parts I miss with saying that there is no input from the from a real sporting perspective in, in what we need in order to be successful uh, at, at, at this level uh, with, with club teams. Um, one thing, and this is for me, uh, is the, and I have a really hard time dealing with that, is the lack of clarity and transparency in the decision-making. Uh, because 
I have a really hard time dealing with unfair situations uh, because I, I, for me, everything needs to be as fair as possible. That's how we compete. And it's not only go to football in life in general. I, I'm, I truly believe it should be fair. And I have such a hard time understanding when then you postpone one game and you give then sporting advantages to to other team and you still don't have any idea of saying like when is that game going to be played who decides when that game is going to be played what considerations is having that is that game even going to be played during this transfer window or is that going to be played during next transfer window um, and where you put that game in, that's going to have consideration and affect other teams here now. Because what you are doing is that you are changing the order that was decided before the league. And this has happened all my seasons in the league, that you start changing the order of fixtures. And you're changing the orders of fixtures without having a clear plan of where you're going to put them in. The natural thing for me would have been to say in the schedule to say if a game can't be played it's going to be played here because this is the next available open slot. That that would be very transparent for me and to understand that this is when the game is going to be played. But we do not operate like that and I have to say that that disturbs me because then I feel it becomes political of when and where games should be played and I don't like that because I don't think it's fair. Well, these cup games as well it means that other teams like the Everton's, etc., who aren't playing in the Champions League, they have to then. So there's just like we seem to be stuffed now with almost too many games. So I think Arsenal don't they get a bye, don't they, to the cup, and, you know, until they get to a certain stage in the Champions League. Is that right? Yeah, I, I I don't disagree on that though. I think you can see the <coughs> the number of games that that we have played so far in the season and you compare that to our competitors I, I don't think we have played too few games uh, to put it like that but you're right that <coughs> the scheduling is not easy but that's why it requires a lot of proactiveness and a lot of understanding that especially in European competitions where we get very little time before we knew what playing dates we are going to have and what opponents we're going to play against, or even if we qualify for the tournament in the, in the first place. We need to have a plan B. We need to have a solution. And we need to have a transparent process so people can see that it's fair. And it's not a different idea of when and where to play if it's one team involved and a different if it's another team involved. That it's the same rule that applies to everyone. And I don't think that's too much to ask for. No. On the plus side, though, you have, <coughs> you've got a really nice big squad of people who can do lots of different things, and you've tried so many different partnerships. And it feels to me like the fact that you were able to bring on Mariola um, and Rosa as subs in the last game, it just completely changed the game again. You know, they didn't really know how to deal with bringing on those new players. And with Frida, it feels like she's almost got in the DeLorean and gone back to the future, and she's gone back two seasons from when she was like... You know, just absolutely, she's probably the best player in the league, in my opinion. What was the question? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you can deal with these, the, 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 the cluster of fixtures is the fact that you've got this enormous squad there. It is. I'm not going to sit here and say that the, the other teams that we compete with, they also have squads. Chelsea also have more than 11 players and yeah. Bayern Munich also uh, and also Everton uh, even if they're a little bit more thin at the moment from a, from a squad perspective so I think but you are right the way we need to use our squad and the need, way we need to be able to go the extra mile with these five games within 15 days here is going to be crucial and we will need every single one of them to be successful Thanks, Helen. Last one from you, Jamie. Hey, it's just one. I just wanted to ask about Kyra Cooney Cross. Um, we've seen her starting a lot more than she did last season alongside Leo Volti and Kim Little. Just wondered what you've made of her development playing next to both those players, and do you still think there's a lot of defensive work to be done with Kyra? Uh, I think Kyra has developed um, really well. I think it has helped her a lot to get more settled, both 
off the pitch but also on the pitch with sort of the role expectations and what you need to do in various phases of, of the game which I think is natural with any player joining us and sometimes you uh, foresee that part when you when you're just thinking that it's just moving to another club and you can just start off where you took off in the in the last club um, I think Kyra is still a, a young player and this doesn't only come to young players I think it's with all our players we can develop so can Kyra uh, she has part in her attacking game in her defending game that that she she should develop uh, but she's working really hard on it we're working really hard um, with her on it and I think it's been a really good start to the season for her thanks guys we'll leave it there thanks so much <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's fine you're um, old school. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys.